All right, so we're here with Carolyn McDonald. Carolyn. Yes. Are you homeless right now? No. No. Mm -hmm. What were you doing up there by 51st Avenue in McDowell? I was walking because it's my it's my birthday weekend, and I'm 46, and I have eight grandchildren, and I'm having fun. Okay. Hmm? Are you um? You were telling me earlier that you have um experience with uh. Hold on, let me turn off the music. Okay. You were Go ahead. telling me earlier that you have a little bit of experience with the with the Zannies and the and the Percocets. Very much so, yeah. What was that all about? Can you tell us a little bit about that? I've had seven, about I've had four brain surgeries, and they were one right after another. So I was never able to get off of them. So doctors take you off of them after six weeks. Mm -hmm. There was never six weeks in between. Okay. Okay. Have you ever done blues? I, I've done blues prescription only, yeah. but then a blue killed a child, killed a kid um, that was very fun to, for my family. It was very, my family loved him. Yeah. And he, um, he died, he was 20. He, was, he just turned 21, not even a week before. Was he addicted to the blues? It was the first time trying it. It was the first time trying it? He didn't know it had fentanyl in it. Okay. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> um, how did you manage to get off of the blues? Like, how did you manage to get off of the pills and all that? Did you do it by yourself or? I was yeah. like, I was a walking zombie and then my daddy died. Yeah. Which was my heart. I love you, daddy. Um, and I have, I have my grandson, I miss his first birthday and I said never again. So I stopped all of it by myself. So it was just willpower? It was God. It was my grandchildren. So, and my kids and my life. So yeah. Mm -hmm. how, many, do you, how many kids do you have? I have four. You have four kids? And almost eight grandchildren. So seven and one on the way in May. And I need to be alive for them. And if I kept taking them, I would be alive today. So I have to, I have to keep fighting for them. It's all that matters to me. Yeah. Yeah, and anybody can get off of them. If I can, after all uh, I've been through, anybody can. It's just, it's just the love of God and the power of your family and faith. Yeah. A lot of faith. And you were telling me earlier that um, over there by 51st and McDowell, it, was there a lot of guys like trying to approach you? Yes, they thought that I was a hooker or call girl or whatever. I couldn't understand them. Yeah. But yeah, they wanted me to go with them because they thought I, I don't know what they thought. I, I'm not from here. You're not from here. Where are you from? Sholo, Arizona. Sholo. How long have you been out here in Phoenix? I've been down here about two months now. Me and my husband separated after we would have been married almost 25 years. 25 he's years. the love of my life, yeah. Yeah, he's still always gonna be my best friend. Do you carry around anything for protection or not? I do, but I don't show it. Yeah. It's not important what I have to anybody because I have to protect myself still. Yeah. Yeah. Especially down here. And where I come from, everybody knows everybody. So nobody would ever bother me there. So, but I grew up here. I, I was born in Arizona, uh, South Side, South Phoenix, then West Side. And then Paradise Valley and then Sholo. So I've been in Sholo 35 years and I just turned 46, the 28th of March. Um, where are you currently staying at? I'm staying with an, a family member. Um, my grandmother's 84 and, I, and she's very sick about me and she's ill. So I don't want her to be hurt. So I'm staying over here, even though my hospital is all the way in, in Scottsdale. 
I have plenty of money to go there, but yeah, I need to be by grandma. She's the only living one that knows me. Um, all my mom, my dad, my brother, they all died. So we buried 11 people in six years as I was having surgeries. So I didn't even get to say goodbye to my brother. And what was, what was all those, why was all that happening? Like all those deaths? All the, all the what? All the deaths in the family? Um, I guess the phase, of, I don't know. Uh, my dad was only 54 years old. So and buried 11 people? 11 family members, the whole head of our family, me and my husband's family, yes. That's a lot of, well, a lot of the head of my family, but our grandparents and our parents, yes, both of our moms and dads, all within about six to seven years, yeah. Did you have any family pass away because of the what's going on right now with the pandemic? Um, we did. We, we've had an uncle that's from California, though, um, my husband's uncle, so I, I don't know him very well, but he, I do, you know what I mean? Because he lived in California. Yeah, my, my husband's from Riverside. Okay. Or he was born in Reddings. His family's all in Needles, California, or in Victorville, yes. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend you stay out there on the west side or walk, or walk around over there. If you don't know this area, that's one of the toughest areas here in I don't, on the west I side. don't know that, but I do know it. I have a lot of family here. My, my little, my, ne my cousin is just right there. As soon as I, I even make one little whistle, he'll yeah. be right here. I have a lot of family here, so um, I, I have my aunts and my cousins, and I have a lot of family here. So you know how they get down right there on 51st Avenue? Right, there you go. Yes, that's that way, right? Or yeah. that way. Okay, yeah, that Especially way. West, yeah. That way they were uh, young kids, young kids. Yeah. My kids' age offering me, I don't know what, a, a crack pipe or something for a cigarette. And yeah. I started to cry because he said, I don't have money. And I said, well, let me give you a cigarette and some money so that you can get a drink or something. I felt horrible for him, but I just make one phone call. He's right here. I could show you if you want me to. And he's from the west side. And then you just, where you just see me come from, yeah. I just met that kid. And he thought I was a call girl too. But then when he realized who I was or what I was and he, totally protecting me and I have his number in my phone too now. That's good. He's a good kid though. He's not on any kind of drugs or anything. Yeah. Okay. The other one down there, he was pretty drugged up and I know that they were smoking the pills. I seen that, but I mind my own business. I was yeah. just gonna give him a cigarette. That's a new thing nowadays. That's it's, what do. it's horrible. It's sad and the pandemic is causing so much worse. I think the pandemic is killing people only because they're allowing it to kill people. The coronavirus has been around for a hundred years. Before that, it was called scars. If you look up and look it up, you can die from the, from the, uh, of the flu right now because of the weather change. It's crazy how it's the weather's changing and the pandemic stuff for over a year now. What, a year and a few months now. And these kids, they need help. Yeah, they do. They don't need gel. They don't need cops bothering them. They need help. They're just young. If it was one of my kids, I would die before I let my kid sell anything. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So it's extremely long, sad. How long have you been clean from the, from the pills? From the... Um, the, the Xanax a couple of years, but the, the um, Oxys, I had to, they wanted me to go off slowly. Um, I was supposed to wait, but I didn't. I just stopped. So a word of advice for people that are trying to stop, like, what would you tell them? How can they, how can they stop themselves? From, how wow. can they do what you did? 
I don't know if they can. I mean, if they had to have brain surgery or something, then maybe, because I've had a few of them, I get it, but that just puts them on drugs more. If you think about it, it's just legal. Yeah. They give you a prescription, it's legal. So, they'll and they'll keep you on it. The, the, that's just the government. It's funny, because it's like, um, yeah, they're legal, but um, the doctor prescribes them, it's like, the doctors are the drug dealers, pretty much. There you go. And now they're adding the fentanyl. Well, there's fentanyl in the hospital. I've had fentanyl many times. And now if they, that's why I'm going to have surgery soon. I have to have another brain surgery soon because I was too scared to go. I told them I won't have fentanyl by me now. The kids are dying from this. And I refuse to allow kids to die, but maybe if these kids they're not even kids. They look like kids to me because I've been in Sholo too long. But they're they're my kids' age. They're just babies. They they're not even old enough to be on their own. My yeah, kids. A lot of youngsters out there. My kids were very lucky. They were very blessed because they had two parents that would and a whole family that would do anything to make sure that they were not on drugs. Yeah, and my son he was uh, put on them. And he's now 26, and he, um, sorry, um, he's now, gonna, he's gonna be 27. My oldest just turned 28, but 27, he, he was, he was having a hard time, but he's a good kid and he's working hard and he has a great family. And if he can do it, because they started putting him on that medication very young, like 16 years old. And that was the oxys. He didn't even have to get a pres he had he had to get a prescription, but back then they'll send it right in the mail. The the oxys and the Xanax. They would send full prescriptions to my 16 year old. How is that okay? He doesn't do that anymore. He's a good kid and he's working his butt off. He has a, a son, which will be my eighth grandchild. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, eighth grandchild uh, will be born in May, and he works for he works for a good place and makes good money and benefits. And he's doing. I'm very proud of him. Very proud. But like I said, he grew up with a family that wasn't going to have it. Me and him were on it at the same time, and we did. We if he can do it, then I can do it. And if I can do it, having all these surgeries, these kids can do it. They just have to open their eyes. And their families need to open their eyes and get these kids back where they need to be. If their families are even here or if they're not all drugged out. I asked a girl today where her mother is. She's too young, way too young. And, you, and I, I knew that she was on those blue things, those blue pills. Uh, she couldn't have been 20 years old. And I said, where's your mother? And her mother was right there. That's one of them. This is one of the people that have been trying to see if I'll go home with them. Yeah. All right. It's thank a shame. You. Thank, thank you for the interview. You, I thank really you. appreciate it. No, it's such a good pleasure to meet you. You're such a beautiful soul. I just love you to pieces already. <laughs> now I want to go dancing down the street. <laughs>